It's Sunny and Finn's Wrestling and Video Game Podcast. If you like this podcast, consider checking out our YouTube channel. We have live streams, let's plays of some of our favorite games, and coming soon, brand new video game reviews. The links are in the description of this podcast. What's up, guys? Welcome to episode 30 of the Sunny and Finn Show. I'm Sunny, and with me, as always, is Finn Steel. Hello. How are you, my friend? Very good, thank you. How are you? Not so good. Not great? No, I'm, I'm under the weather today. Ah, uh, not good. Uh, if it wasn't for doing this, I would be in bed sulking. Oh, dear. Not Feeling good. sorry for myself. Don't breathe on me. I'll try not to breathe <laughs> on you. It's a good job we don't share a mic. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Yeah. Otherwise, you would have <laughs> the, the, the sunny lurgy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh dear. Um, we've got a lot to cover as well today. We do, it's going to be a long one. We'll, we'll try and breeze through it <laughs> as quick as we can, just yeah. to get me off to bed. Oh dear. But, um, Not good. Let's get straight into it. Yes, um, yes. What have you been playing this week? Um, well, surprise, surprise, I've been playing Overwatch. Genuinely shocked. Yeah. Um, still trying to get through competitive. Um, almost got myself up to Diamond, then started a hell of a losing streak. Right back down to like early Platinum. Um, at first I was quite annoyed because I like, kept losing stupid matches, and now it's a comical I'm just like laughing at it it's like it makes stupid mistakes like yesterday I was playing a match um, ended up walking off a cliff trying to chase down a diva who's out of a mech <laughs> I was playing like Zarya or something it's like really, like really stupid mistakes it's like uh, it's just started to laugh first out laughing so this is why I, I don't play it competitively because <laughs> um, one it would just annoy me so much yeah I was getting um, pretty salty and my but... um, my patience just are too thin for it yeah uh, but yeah I might take a few days off from it because I need, I need a break from it sometimes you need that though like if yeah. you're struggling with, like it's like with anything if you're like struggling on a boss or something like that and you just hammer it and hammer it and hammer it and just can't do it mm. and you come back a few days later do it first time yeah exactly so I think it's, I think I just burnt out on the minute, on the minute. how about you what are you been playing um, well I got my platinum on until done nice um, and okay. I really enjoyed playing it to see the alternative endings because I'd mm. already done it once blind so I went back and um, did it again with the other endings and which were good Cool. Really good game. One yeah, of the best good. on PS4, I think. Mm. Um, other than that, I haven't really been sort of... Um, believe it or not, um, I actually... I was so bored a few days back, I actually dipped into uh, Call of Duty Black Ops 3. Oh, wow. Okay. And I've been playing the competitive multiplayer on that. Oh, wow. Okay. And really enjoying it. I put it on again earlier on. And I'm, really, I'm actually really enjoying it. And I'm a little bit disappointed in myself that I've not given it... More time. I mean, I've had it since launch day. I just have hardly played it. But <laughs> I've been playing it uh, and actually really enjoying it. So that's cool. Cool. Um, I tried the Forza Horizon 3 demo. Oh, yeah. I just tried it, actually. Which was a massive 18 gig download. Um, but it's, oh, man, it's it's stunning. Yeah. Like, it's so good. Like, good. The, f- the first bit, you like, you drive over a hill and you see sort of the, like, the, you know, the background and sort of how deep it is. And it's nice. like, oh my God, this is unbelievable. Yeah. I think I actually said it out loud. I was playing it on my <laughs> own. I was just drove over the hill. I was like, oh my God. Wow. But yeah, it's brilliant. I can't wait for that to launch. Um, I've tried the FIFA 17 demo. Oh yeah. How was it? Uh, I'm not a hundred percent convinced by it at the minute. All right. Okay. Um, it's slower. The passing hasn't improved. Mm. And there's a few other bits that I'm not convinced by. I need more time with it to really you know, get to grips with it more. Yeah. Um, I've got PES 2017 to play. Nice. The kind folks over at Konami have sent us a review copy. Oh, very nice. Which is nice. Thank you, Konami. Um, thank you very much, Konami. Well, review's coming soon. Review is going to come soon. We're going to do a video review, which will go up on our YouTube page. Yes. That's pretty much about it. Cool. Um, there is some gaming news this week. Okay, okay. Let's start with um, one that you actually you actually asked me a question last week, and I now have an answer for you. Oh yeah, you asked me if the Last Guardian, if <laughs> I thought the Last Guardian was going to be delayed mm-hmm. again. Uh, I said no, it can't possibly, surely. Yeah, and I agree with you. Lo and behold, <laughs> it has been delayed again. God damn it! So the Last Guardian um, was due to come in October. Yep, is now coming the sixth of December this year. Damn, another couple months. Can we both agree now <laughs> that this game is in trouble? It's still going to be good. This game's got a problem. It's going to be amazing. Best game the year, the decade, millennium. But it's becoming a joke now. This was a <laughs> PS3 a <laughs> game. This was supposed yeah. to be a PS3 game. Oh, I man. mean, the PS4 has been out three years this year. Yeah. And it still isn't here. Still. I'd be in trouble with my bet. Another bet I'm going to lose. God what? damn it. Well, do you think it's going to be, do you think it's going to be bad? Um, I don't know. It's just, uh, it's hard to say. Something's got to give good. with it. Something has to give. Yeah. Like there's problems with this game, otherwise it'd have been out 
ages ago. Yeah, I agree. Something's not right. Yeah. It is disappointing. Good. It is. It is. Um, not for me. I mean, I was going to wait for you to play it and tell me <laughs> that day. it sucked. But um, this is becoming a joke now. And I think um, it is a bit. this game, although there's hype surrounding it and there's people who are really looking forward to it, um, I think it's in trouble. Yeah. Could be. I don't know. I hope it turns out right. I think it's gross. Oh, I hope it turns out right. I never want games to suck. I want, yeah, I want yeah. all games to be great. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. This has been delayed so many times and has had so many problems in production that I just don't see any way that it can be um, a critical success. Commercially, I think it'll sell. Yeah, it will. Critically, I don't think it's going to be... I don't think it's going to do that well. Yeah, you're probably right. Dang. Oh, well, we'll see. PlayStation 4. Yes. Firmware update 4.0. Launched mm. yesterday. It has. Um, what did? What? I like it. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Um, um, it's added folders. Yeah. Um, so I've put the junk that I don't <laughs> use, uh, like, you know, there's just some of the apps that are on there. Uh, put them into one folder. Nice. I put, uh, I put myself like a little queue. It's like, these are the games you need to play next. Ah. So I'm sure I'll add more and more to and never play through any of them. <laughs> <laughs> and that folder will just become too packed that you can't put any more in there. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's added a very handy quick menu. Which cool. I'm a big fan of. So, like, when I you're playing, uh, you press and hold the PS button down. Oh, yeah. um, instead of it taking you to a whole new screen, uh, a screen pops up from the side. Yeah, and it's got all of it. your stuff there. So, it's got your online. You, you can customize it, too. So, you can, so it's, you know, it has on there what you want on there. That's cool. So, you can, um, so it's got your online friends. It's got, and it's got the game there. And it's got easy access to the trophies. Instead of you having to go, you know, out of the game into the trophies bit. Nice. Um, you can now look at it in-game. And it will bring up the trophies instantly for that game. Awesome. Um, so it's really, really good. Um, I'm impressed by it. Yeah. Um, it's added HDR as well, I think, or maybe that's coming I don't, I don't yet, soon. Apparently. It's coming oh, this soon. one hasn't, but it's coming. It's coming. Apparently. Okay. So 4.001, that'll be, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, probably. Fine. Um, but that's pretty cool. I'm, uh, yeah. Uh, it's, it's nice because it's added a few new colors and stuff as well. Yeah. Um, it just refreshes things when things get a bit boring. Yeah, a little bit. Looks, yeah. It, looks, it looks nicer, yeah. Yeah. Um, Red Dead Revolver. Ooh. Could be coming to PlayStation 4 uh, as part of the PS2 backwards compatibility. Cool. I haven't played that one. Um, this one popped up on the Australian PlayStation Store and was quickly removed. <laughs> yeah. Um, somebody managed to screen capture it. Nice. Um, of course. I have no doubts that this is real. Yeah. I mean, they've got Rockstar have all the other games on there. They've got GTA 3, Vice City and all that. And the Warriors is on there. Yeah, Max so, Payne. Exactly, yeah. So there's no way this isn't real. <laughs> so this, this will be real. This, this it's good. I, I haven't played this either. So, um, yeah, yeah, so some people didn't even one. know about it. I was talking to a friend and uh, I mentioned this and he was like, what's Red Dead Revolver? Oh, I was mean? like, right, fair enough. I mean, yeah. I mean is, it, is it is that real? Is it a rock star thing? Is it a sequel? He didn't know what it was. So um, it'd be cool for him to play as well. Yeah. And I other mean, people. I mean, cool me to play. Uh, yeah, I mean, I haven't <laughs> yeah. played it either. So um, I don't know why I didn't play it. I mean, yeah, I always sort of... <laughs> the first, first Red Dead game I heard of was Redemption. And then yeah. it was late offhand. Oh, it's a sequel. Sweet. Yeah. Well, I'd heard of Red Dead Revolver before because I remember the box art. Oh, yeah. It's like a like a blue sky and like the cowboy, the cowboy guy. And the gun. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I never. I, I don't know why. I always avoided. It. Maybe yeah. I didn't know it was Rockstar or. Yeah. Who knows? Who knows? Get the chance soon, maybe. Yeah. Hopefully. PlayStation VR, mm-hmm. which is something we are both very excited for, and we very say excited. this pretty much every week. Mm-hmm. It's wait. coming with a demo disc. It is. And you get to play eight games on said demo disc. Mm-hmm. I think I mentioned it before, actually. And I'm about to... Really? I think so. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, I think because I think uh, the Americans get a bigger demo disc, like 18 games. Yeah, they get 18, yeah. Yeah, dickheads. But I don't, I don't <laughs> know if this was announced last time we did the podcast. Can't remember. We'll talk about it again. Apologies okay. if you've heard this a second time. Yeah, <laughs> we, we don't know what we talk about, clearly, on a weekly we, basis. We, can't, we don't know. We forget. I don't <laughs> think we have talked about this. You're probably right. I don't know. You might be not okay. streaming. Um, so, uh, we get Drive Club VR. Nice. PlayStation VR Worlds. Cool. Um, we get to try out Rigs. Nice. Tumble VR. Nice. Battle Zone. Nice. Eve Valkyrie. Okay. Wayward Sky. And something called Headmaster. Oh, it's like a football game where you just like head balls and a ball into a net. Oh, right. I see. Yeah. You'd like it. you love it. <laughs> I'll love it. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's, well, that's good for me. Um, <laughs> Looks fun. Yeah, in America they get eighteen games. I know, jerks, including like Resident Evil and yeah, man. Um, until Dawn and stuff like that. So no uh, we I'm not that. sure why they I get know. more than us. Bizarre, isn't it? Maybe these games will be on the PlayStation Store for us to download. Maybe, hopefully. 
There's already a Resident Evil demo. Why can't they just VR it up? Exactly. Yeah. Sure. I'm sure we'll. I'm sure we will see them. I'm, yeah, you're probably right. Um, but that's exciting. I, I think that's good that they're doing that because it gives you then. Because I, I mean, the only thing I've pre-ordered on VR is Batman. Oh yeah. So I don't know. You know, I, didn't, I was I was sort of unsure as to what else I was going to go for, mm. um, but this demo disc is definitely going to help. Yes, that. Definitely. And um, I'm super excited. So excited! Can't wait. Been on October. Yes, Super Mario has sold his soul, Woo-hoo. and has a game coming out on smartphones. Oh yeah, I thought that in the form of Super Mario Run. Yay! So Can Mario runs on his game. own, and you have to tap the screen to help Mario leap over objects and jump onto objects and other such things. Of course. This is being released on iOS for iPhones this fall, and I think Android also. Fine. Let me know it's down to happen eventually, wouldn't it? Sure. Uh, I mean, this is smart business from Nintendo. Yeah. I mean, what what they have to do here is look at the success of Pokemon Go. Yeah, seriously. And realise that this is realistically a no-brainer. Yeah, yeah. And something that just makes complete sense going forward. I mean, how many people play mobile phone games? Exactly, yeah. I mean, I do. I, I play WWE Supercard and <laughs> a couple of other bits when I've got nothing better to do. Yeah, yeah. It's, way and places, it's the way forward. They'll make a ton of money off it. There's like a free-to-play version and then um, there's a sort of pay once, get the whole game sort oh, of yeah. thing. With some mobile games, obviously, it involves microtransactions. Mm. This will be buy once, get the whole game. So okay, that's um, I think that's pretty cool. I'll try it out. I'll try the trial out at least when, he, when it comes out. If it's yeah. good, I'll, I'll buy it. Yeah, sure. Why Unless not? it's a ridiculous price. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Nintendo will make a ton of money off this, I think. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Faux show. show. Um, here's one for you, and yep. I don't know if you've seen it yet. Okay. But um, Sonic Mania has a unbelievable collector's edition announced. I have seen it, yeah. Um, and I want it so badly. Me too. Problem is, it's not coming out in Europe. Oh, is it not? It's not. America's only, because... Ha <laughs> screw you, everywhere else. That sucks. It does suck. I wanted it so badly. I got so excited when I saw it. It's like, <gasps> then, not available in Europe. Ugh. <laughs> so, what, is it ne- they're not even going to entertain it? Apparently not, no. Maybe with enough demand, they'll change their mind, but... I hope so. I, I mean, so. surely there is going to be enough demand. You think so? You can you? get it imported. Yeah. yeah. It comes with a 12-inch Sonic statue. He's standing on top of a Sega Mega Drive. Nice. Apparently it has Sega Startup Audio. Yeah, that's cool. Comes in a uh, deluxe collector's box uh, with a metallic collector's key card with a download key. Very cool. And you get a Sega, car- a Sega cartridge cast with a golden ring. Nice. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, it looks very, very nice. Super nice. $70 is priced at, so... I would buy that if you bought it over here. Sega. Hint, hint. <laughs> yeah. Good luck with that. Yeah. Um, if you... That's all I've got. I mean, it's been a pretty slow news week. I mean, uh, I know obviously last week we caught the announcement at the right time because we were watching oh, the, yeah. the press conference while it was going on. So we know the PlayStation Pro is coming out. We know that the PlayStation Slim is coming. Um, a lot of backlash for the PlayStation Pro. A lot of people really don't yeah. know why it's even happening. Yeah, I think they were expecting more from it, like to be more powerful, but we just kind of like a minor upgrade to what they already got. Yeah, I mean, especially with them bringing HDR to regular PlayStations, obviously, mm-hmm. as well as the PlayStation Slim. It's an interesting one because, um, you know, all it really seems to do is bring the games up to 4K. Obviously, it's got Pretty much. You know, some, you know, new hardware under the hood, but re- what the, the main focus of that press conference, that really boring press conference, <laughs> yeah. that was terrible. Yeah, it was much. really, really poor. It's pretty bad. Uh, and... Uh, all they really seemed to talk about was 4K, 4K, HDR, 4K. Yeah. Whereas, you know, when Microsoft announced the Xbox One S, they did it very quickly and, you know, didn't have to go into all these fine details. They're like, here's HDR, here's what it does. Um, you know, this is what you're getting, here it is, and go, go buy it. Pretty much. And the Xbox One S has 4K Blu-ray, which PlayStation Pro does not. Yeah, it's true. Which is an interesting one. So, really? um, it's had a lot of backlash. I mean, if you are that bothered about graphical fidelity and frames per second and all that sort of stuff, you don't play on a console. Yeah, pretty much. But I mean, it would be nice to play games in 60 frames per second, but I don't know if there'll be enough of it to make the 4K PlayStation, what it was called, PlayStation Pro, worth it for average people like me and you. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's it's like we said last week. I mean, games that come out now are superb looking. Like, yeah, you know, like great. Until Dawn is fantastic. Yeah. And Deus Ex looks great. Well. Deus Ex, great. You know, even stuff like FIFA and all, that, all the all these games already look fantastic. Yeah. 
you know, I'm not in a rush to go out and buy a 4K TV for this. No, same. Because like, it still looks crystal clear to me. It's like, how can it get any clearer? But then I guess you said that when HD came out, so I don't know. But it, I don't <laughs> think it's the same as that. When, when is, HD yeah. came out, it was a massive leak. Because we were playing yeah, on enormous TVs before then. Yeah. We were playing on like bloody massive backed TVs. I mean, when I first got my 360, that's what I was playing on. Yeah, same here. And then like I went to a friend's and he just bought a, a HD TV. It was only like a small one, like a 23 inch or something. Mm. And I was like, wow, the, the graphics look amazing. So yeah. I went out and I, you know, bought a, like a 19 inch HD TV or something. And I was playing my 360 on that. And I was like, wow, this is amazing. Yeah, yeah. And I have, ne- I've never looked back since and I never will. But, you know, it's not like that. It's not like everyone's making that leap to 4K. It's like 4K TVs are there. You can go out and you can get one if you want, but it's not as a big deal as it was when HD TVs came out. Yeah, I agree. It's not as jaw-dropping. I mean, it still looks great, 4K, but just yeah. not as much of a leap as uh, HD was. Yeah. Um, and I think that's why a lot of people are sort of like, well, well, like regular... Pl- yeah. PlayStation owners, PlayStation 4 owners aren't going to all of a sudden trade their PS4s in for this because realistically, unless they've got a 4K TV, there is no need. Exactly. I mean, even with HDR, HDR isn't a common thing. No, no. It's not something that. that's, you know, tacked onto all TVs. It's no. it's a very sort of niche thing. It's not it's fairly new as well. Yeah, yeah. So they can keep they can keep throwing HDR out there, but people a lot of people won't know what it is. No. I only bought my TV quite recently and that doesn't have it. It's quite expensive TV as well. <laughs> well <laughs> like, I'm, oh man. So, I mean with the install base here, you have to imagine a lot of people um are casuals. Yeah. So yeah. they've they've got a they've got a PS4 for FIFA and mm-hmm. for Call of Duty. Exactly. And because those things I feel come hand in hand pretty much. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, a lot of the install base isn't going to be bothered by HDR or 4K. They just want to play their FIFA or their Call of Duty and exactly. stuff like that. And, um, filthy, filthy casuals. <laughs> and that's, that's why this decision to bring PlayStation 4 Pro out is baffling to me. Yeah, at this point, way. at least, you know, bring the PlayStation Slim out. That makes sense because they've done that every console cycle. There was a PS1 Slim, or whatever it was called. Yep. There was a PS2 and a PS3 Slim. Yep. So yeah, that's fine. It makes sense, natural progression. But with the PlayStation Pro, it almost feels like they are confusing the ecosystem with a console that doesn't need to be there. Yeah, I agree. I think it's, I think it's too early. Uh, I think Microsoft got it right, wait until the end of next year to release yeah. their what they Scorpio. Yeah, they put the so. feelers out. They're like, here's what's coming, and here's what it's going to be able to do. We're going to see our technology progresses over the next year yeah and this is when you know this is when you'll see it uh, and i think sony should have done the same i don't know mm. if they felt backed into a corner with that yeah. announcement and felt like that we've got to get something out now to compete because it it isn't something that's going to compete because we really don't know anything about scorpio at the minute all we know is that it's a thing and we don't know if it's going to be part of the xbox um we don't know if it's going to be a new xbox one or whether it's going to be a, um, a console separate separate from that mm. Um, you know, or, you know, we don't we don't know what it's going to be yet. Yeah, I think I think Sony have panicked. It's like, quick, we need a new console. X, Sony uh, Xbox has got this new thing coming. Let's get ours out really early, and fast, try to get ahead of the game, and just kind of kind of haven't really done a good job of it, of like explaining or like explaining what why it is and why it's different and why we need it. And that that press opinion. conference made no sense either yeah, because it didn't give people a reason to care about this piece of hardware. Yeah, there's a lot of technical mumbo jumbo, which I don't think got across very well. So what? Uh, I don't, that's another thing I don't understand. Why stream yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, it's a bit weird. Just announce it. Just, just you know, show it to you know selected members of the press or something. Yeah, yeah. And then then announce it, and then just say, oh right, this is coming. Don't make a big, don't announce the press conference, get people excited, stream it on Twitch and YouTube and all this sort of thing, and then. Just, yeah. Then annoy people with it. <laughs> exactly. That's that's exactly what it's done. It's it's annoyed people and just made people question them more than anything. Yeah, I agree. Not a good performance from Sony at the minute. Uh, speaking of not a good performance from Sony, uh, uh, Bethesda has come out and said there won't be mods for Fallout 4 or Skyrim Special Edition for PlayStation 4 because Sony won't allow it for whatever reason. Yeah. Which is ee, not great. But, and they've come out <laughs> and flat out good. said that it's Sony's fault as yeah. well. They, they've not even sugarcoated it. They have literally <laughs> said, I mean, I can't remember it you know, verbatim, but it was basically, um, yeah, we, we wanted to bring mods. They're ready to go. We've worked really hard on it, but yeah. Sony won't. Sony won't allow it in the Sony way. Sony won't green light it. In the way we want it to happen, which is basically let people mod it however they want. And uh, yeah, apparently, I think apparently um, they wanted Bethesda to do like quality tests to each mod. 
and like make sure it's up to standards or whatever. But there's no way they could have done that. There's way too many mod people making mods. It's like, come on, Sony. Sony, Sony, Sony got a bad rap at the minute. It's not good. Yeah, I mean, considering how well it has been going for Sony. Yeah, yeah. This um, this last sort of you know week or so has not been good for them. No. I mean, um, the Xbox One has outsold PS4 in the last couple of months. Finally. Finally. Um, but well, I mean that, that's fine. I mean Xbox One's a great console. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, <laughs> and I think people are finally starting to see it for what it is. I mean, it's got a great lineup coming out with Gears of War, Forza, and stuff like that coming out as well. So, mm -hmm. um, but you know, this bad press from Bethesda being aimed directly at Sony, not even indirectly, just <laughs> directly at Sony. Yeah, and um, because you can get mods for Fallout on Xbox One. Yeah, you can. Yeah, They're and I imagine Fallout. For, I mean, I imagine Skyrim. Yep, will have the same. They will. Yeah. So I'm not really sure what the problem is with Sony. Yeah, weird one. I think I think the hack like a few years ago might have scared them a bit. They don't want to let. Do you see any backtracking again. on this? Um, I hope they see the bad press and like change their mind and like see what people want and I don't know, maybe add in later. Mm. Who knows? Weird one. Yes, it's a very very weird one. Anything else? Um, yeah, it's more TGS stuff. Um, so Sony had their TGS Tokyo Game Show uh, conference. Yes, they did. Um, uh, lots of stuff happening, mostly relating to Jack Japan. Uh, we did get a worldwide release date for Neo, which is the Dark Samurai Dark Souls game. It's had uh, yes. many uh, alphas and betas. Um, and the delete the date is where was it gone? There it is uh, February the ninth worldwide. Okay, uh, it's one I'm looking forward to definitely. And you can catch Finn streaming <laughs> that game on Badly. our YouTube channel. <laughs> yeah, I think and the video is up on there now. Yeah. Um, other than that, what else have we got? Uh, new uh, Kingdom Hearts 2.8 trailer. Looks nice. Cool music. Is that the Disney one? Uh, yes. Okay. Disney and Square Enix. I've always been sort of quite intrigued by that game. It's great. Because um, it wasn't it on the PlayStation 2. Oh, yes. Lesson 2. And then they made the HD collection on PS3. And then Kingdom Hearts 3 is coming out on PS4. And there's another HD collection, uh, which is Kingdom Hearts 2.8, coming to the PS4. When's that coming out? Uh, soon. <laughs> soon. <laughs> next right. year. Okay, next good. Year, soon. Like, Early next year. Early next year. Okay. Yeah. That's what I'm actually quite interested. In. I might look. I might have a look at that when it comes out. Yeah. It's cool. Very cool. Um, what's got near automata? Automata. You say tomato. I say tomato. <laughs> um, it's coming launches next year. Early next year in Japan. Uh, one well, I'm looking forward to. Very Japanese uh, game. Me made by Platinum Games. Mm. Has my attention. Because uh, they are excellent. Yes. Uh, no worldwide release date, but in Japan it's coming out 23rd of February. Okay. But, uh, want to keep an eye on for sure. Um, other than that, there's a new place to read the colours coming to Japan. And the the metallic yeah. red is gorgeous. <laughs> it did look really nice to be fair. But uh, I doubt we'll see it over here. Nope. The PlayStation Vita is not dead. At least not at least not in Japan. And <laughs> not in Japan, no. It's still going. I was playing games in there. Yeah, well, the Vita's great. Again. Yeah, it's great. Good little console. Mm. Yeah. But yeah, that's about it really. Okay. Which is good because there was a ton of wrestling to get through. Yeah, seriously. Um, I haven't got any wrestling notes to be honest, but I'm, um, uh, you know, it's all quite fresh because yeah. you know it's literally happened in the last three days. Yeah, seriously. Um, so backlash was this past Sunday. It was, and um, in a nutshell, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, it was good. I liked it. I thought way more than I thought I would. Way more than yeah. I thought I would. Um, before we get into that, actually, I just want to thank everybody who came along to our Backlash live stream yes. uh, this past Sunday. Thank you. Uh, as always, it was a lot of fun. We picked up some new subscribers. So fun. And um, yeah, it was nice talking to some new people as well, mm -hmm. as well as the, the, the regular faces that we see on there. Absolutely. So thank you very much, guys. The next one's going to be Clash of Champions, which Finn will be partaking in by himself. Yes. As I will not be around. Oh, snap. So it'll be way better. <laughs> yes. Go. And means he also will get away with defending his championship. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'd defend it against nobody. <laughs> um, I'd love it if you defended it against AI and lost. <laughs> yeah, it'd be funny. <laughs> well, but now it's not anymore. Yeah. yeah someone's got to beat AI. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay, so let, let's talk Backlash. I mean, this was a way better show than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, and uh, I had no idea how they were going to fill three hours with uh, six matches. Uh, it turned yeah. out that it didn't end up being three hours yeah it was like two and a two half, half just yeah. over but um yeah it, it was really really good started off with a very strong women's uh six-pack challenge before that even in the pre-show i uh, had baron corbin versus apollo cruz which is also very good right surprisingly great 
actually. I didn't see that, actually. <laughs> it's great. I'll check, check it out. I knew um, it happened because I watched SmackDown, but um, I didn't actually watch the pre-show. Yeah, but it was a great match. Both guys looked strong and good. Uh, Corbin ended up winning with the end of days. Yes. Uh, and yeah, I'm totally fine with that. I hope they're sure to be uh, interviewed going forwards. Many more matches, I'm sure. Have you seen SmackDown? I have. Okay. Oh, yeah, because he got, yeah, that, that thing happened. Yeah. We'll get to that. But yes, the first match of the night, pop, pop on the proper show, uh, the women's elimination six pack thingamajig. And it was great. Yeah, for the women's <laughs> championship. <laughs> and uh, it was, it was really good. It mm. was, you know, it was a really good showcase for the SmackDown women's division, which we've been fairly critical of since um, the brand split. Yeah. And, you know, because it wasn't looking strong. There was a couple of weird promos that have happened and yeah. some, you know, it's not put it in a really great spotlight, but this match really did. It it had it had everything. I thought everybody played their part. and yeah. uh, everybody had they, a little moment. And everyone came out of it looking very strong. Yes. Uh, like this, uh, dressed up as like a Holly Quinn can kind of get up. Which I have a lot of time for. Yes, like, I can't tell you how much time I have for it. Yeah, seriously. Hotness. Um, <sighs> so good. Yeah, so good. My kind of lady. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, but yeah, great match. Uh, Alexa actually got eliminated first. Boo. Boo. Uh, it was like after like an awesome powerbomb, neckbreaker, on the top rope kind of thing. Great call, Licking. Uh, and Naomi got eliminated after a springboard. Uh, her springboard counted into uh, Nikki's elbow thing. Uh, and then Natalia Sharps here. Uh, and Nikki eliminated Natalia with her new finisher, STA, I think it is. Like this neckbreaker... Thingamajig. Oh, the TKO. TKO, that's the one. Is that it? It used to be Marvelous Mark Mero's finishing move. Yeah. And it was called the same thing, so yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, and after that, Carmella rolls up Nikki right afterwards for an elimination. Uh, called it. You um, did call it. Yeah. And then uh, after that, Nikki slaps Carmella around the face on the way out. Uh, Carmella goes nuts on Becky. Uh, Becky hits back with some suplexes, some Bex flexes, and then into a disarmor for the win. And Becky's a new champion. Hooray. Deserved. Well deserved, yes. Very much deserved. Um, and yeah, I think Becky is definitely the right person to carry the SmackDown women's division going forward, definitely. Like, for sure. Um, and, but I was very impressed with this match. Um, impressed with everybody. Yes. Naomi had a couple of ropey moments in the match, but um, she's forgiven because the match itself was great. So, yeah, it's um, fine. I think we both had Becky in the predictions. We I think did. we all had Becky in the predictions because Steve we did, um, was here last week with us. Yep, yep. And we all gave our backlash predictions and we'll run them down match through match. Yes. So you'll get one point for that. Ding. Ding, ding, ding. Uh, so then we have a segment backstage with some annoying kid called Jagger Eaton. Yeah, I never heard of Who? him. Yeah. Like, I mean, obviously later discovered that he's someone from Nickelodeon. Yeah, or something. Who cares? But he Nobody was cares. so... If he's an actor, he's a terrible he's one. He's a terrible, terrible actor. Because that segment was awful. Yeah. Is he a skateboarder or something? Who, who knows? Who okay. cares? Yeah, fair <laughs> enough, yeah. Uh, after that, we had Bray Wyatt attacking Randy, Randy Orton backstage. Mm. Shocking. We um, talked about this um, uh, on the stream on Sunday. Yeah. About how it was announced sort of pretty much just before or maybe even during that uh, this match possibly wasn't going to happen because mm. Randy Orton wasn't cleared to compete due to concussion impact. Um, he didn't pass that test. Fair play. Um, so WWE made the right call. That's fine. I feel like they could have made a better way than just having Bray attack him backstage to cancel a match. Mm. It seemed kind of out of character for Bray. I think it was just, very last minute, though. Yeah, he probably wrote Just last minute. Yeah. Him. That's fine. Uh, after that, we have the Usos. Us. Oh. Versus the Hype Bros. <laughs> uh, Usos with a new look. Uh, this the colours, and now it's basically coming out black and white, which is fine. Um, can I just say mm-hmm. um, that... They need to change the Titan Tron yep. and maybe okay. even the entrance music. Yeah, definitely. Because they've still got that sort of play hard in the paint stuff and it doesn't fit in with their gimmick anymore because they're yeah. not well, they're not even wearing paint for a start. <laughs> and um they're they're bad guys now, so they should have different, more bad guy ish yeah. entrance music. I think they'll I think they'll be changed by next week. Put them that chance to make a new music when they're not yet. <laughs> Surely you're prepared for this sort of thing. Well, you'd think, wouldn't you? It's WWE. Yeah, you never know. Either way, it's out of date on 2K17 already. So, <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, it's an okay match. Uh, I like the evil Uso, evil, evil Usos. I do. Uh, much better. Their offense has changed. Uh, they're not pandering to the crowd anymore. Um, they're they're being really good heels. I, I yep. can't say much more than that for them. They're just uh, they've taken the gimmick and they've embraced it. And I think that is all you could really ask for of yep, them I agree 
Um, it's very fine. The match ended when uh, one of the Usos, I can tell which one, uh, attacked Zack's leg, same as it did to American Alpha, and uh, went to that leg submission thingy that he does. The Tequila Sunrise. That's the one. And then that was the end of the match. He said win. I don't know if they're calling it that in WWE, but that's what I know it as. So yeah. uh, that's what I'm going to call it. Fair play. Uh, but it was a good match. Um, yeah. We had the Usos winning that, didn't we? Uh, yes, we all did. All of us. Yep. Yeah, the, the predictions are very similar um, <laughs> up until, you know, around the upper end of the card. Yes. And we all start to change. Pretty much. Mm. Uh, what next? So next we have The Miz versus Dolph Ziggler. I really nice enjoyed battle. this match. Yes, I thought it was. Good. I thought it was excellent. I thought both guys were superb. Yeah, yeah. One of the best matches of the nights, I think. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Uh, at one point, Miz was stealing like Danny Bryan's moves. He did like the corner drop kicks. And he did like the surfboard uh, submission. Uh, yeah, very cool. Good uh, stuff by Miz. Yeah, Miz, Miz is on fire at the minute. He really is. Like, yeah, he really is on fire. He's great. Uh, um, sorry, no, no. I was gonna say the match ended when uh, Maurice sprayed Dolph Ziggler with. Something. I don't know what. We'll just guess a pepper spray. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Something like that. I don't know. Um, but it was really. I think, that, to be honest, I think this was the best match of the night. Yeah. Um, I would say. Um, but um, I knew. I I knew it wasn't time to call. Um, to bring Mrs. IC title run to an end. Yeah. Um, it has to keep going. I agree. Because he's, you know, arguably, you know, one of the best things on SmackDown at the minute. Yeah, I agree. So they just have to keep it going. Dolph Ziggler has lost momentum and people have stopped really being interested in a way. Yeah, he's yeah, he's a bit of a slump at the minute. Very much so. And they need to figure out where he's going fairly quickly. Otherwise, yeah, you know, um, about. switch into a Raw or something. I don't know. Yeah. <clears throat> have him do nothing there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, right, so after that, we have Bray Wyatt versus Randy Orton. And they both had a miss to win that, by the way, in the predictions. Yes. So three points each. Uh, so, yes, Ray versus Randy. Uh, Bray wanted a 10 count to make the forfeit official, and they get it. Sure. Which means I win that bet because I said Bray would win. That and is so Randy Orton win. cheap. <laughs> I get a point for me. That is so incredibly cheap and sneaky from you. And sneaky, but it counts. <laughs> okay, we can't argue with you. It does count. Fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> uh, That's cheap. It's a bit cheap. I'll, I'll agree. But I'm going to take it. Because I need the points. <laughs> okay. Uh, but yeah, that was that was weird. I thought it's kind of out of character for Bray to just demand like a beneficial forfeit. Yeah. Weird. Yeah, it was fine. Uh, but he did get a match instead. Uh, no holds barred. No holds barred match against Kane. All right, sure. But the surprising thing was <laughs> this was very entertaining. It was all right. Yeah, it wasn't that bad. Uh, and I actually really enjoyed it. I was, I was sitting there thinking. Like when when Kane was walking down, I was thinking, I don't want to see this. Yeah, same here. Because it was rumoured to be Kane, and I was like, right, right okay, I'm expecting Kane here, so you're going to come down, I'm going to pretend to be interested. <laughs> but then like, they were getting, you know, the match was getting underway and stuff, and I was like, oh, okay, this is surprisingly yeah. good. They've just given these two big guys freedom to go beat the crap out of each other yeah, um, in a no-holds-barred match that was never planned. Yeah. So, fair enough, they've made something out of nothing, and... Um, I'm substituting Randy Orton for Kane, and because Kane won, no, I get a point. No, what? Because Kane, Kane isn't Randy Orton. Come on, it's a, it's a count out. We, we we didn't know this match was going to happen, and thus couldn't give any sort of uh, prediction for it. But this says to me that because because if I knew Kane versus Bray, clearly I would have said Kane was going to win. No, I'm afraid not. <laughs> the thing is, Kane was uh, Randy Orton was clearly supposed to win this match. What do you know? I think so. Yeah, we'll never know. Fine, well, uh, you take your crappy cheat points. Thank you. Um, I will. Kane won because Randy Orton came in and did the RKO safely. And yes. um, <laughs> Kane, won. The, Kane won with a choke slam. Yeah, it's, uh, it's fine. But it's fine. I don't know what ha- don't know what's happening with Kane at the minute. It's, yeah, it's in a weird spot. Seems to be sort of, uh, can you fill in here, please, sort of wrestler. Yeah, pretty much. Um, uh, which is, sh- I, I do still think he's got a good, he's got a solid year left in him. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I think yeah. Yeah. That's when to say that he's right. He can still not good matches. Yeah, of course. I mean, he's not going to, you know, fly around the ring. He's never been that guy. Yeah, exactly. But he can still put on a solid match. He is a very good big man. Yeah. Um, And he's, he's still interesting. Still relevant, in my opinion. It's not yeah. it's not like Big Show, who's become sort of one of them like, oh. Yeah. Is he face to heel? Yeah. You know, it's it. becoming a bit tedious, <laughs> that sort of thing. But yeah. with Kane, I don't think it's like that. I think people still... Uh, have a lot of time for Kane yeah. and know that he can put on a good match and stuff so I'd like to see Kane used in a different way yeah I agree 
Um, so after that, we had uh, the tag team title match. Uh, the Usos versus Heath Slater and Rhino. Hmm. It was a okay match. It was fine. It was kind of short. Um, Heath is super over. A lot of chance. Um, and yeah, they, they won. <laughs> they did win. Right, Rhino Gord won the Usos and yeah, that was it. Match over. See, that's a recurring theme with this. Rhino is picking up the wins and Heath Slater's riding on the coattails. Yeah. And I think this will play out in, you know, the weeks to come. Um, with Rhino continuing to pick the wins up and carrying Heath Slater until eventually they do drop the tag team titles. Yeah. Um, but I wasn't surprised that they won. I think I had it in my predictions. You did, yes. You guys got a point back with that one. So it's four points each. <clears throat> Woohoo! <laughs> um, but I, I, you know what? Uh, I actually don't hate it. Yeah. I thought I was going to, but um, if they're going to defend the tag team titles for a while going forward, um, then... I'm happy for them to be the tag team titles. Yeah. Be the fine. tag team champions, rather. Well, this is someone like uh, American Alpha win it, but yeah, whatever. It is what it is for now. It is, yeah. It won't be like this forever. That's what we need to yeah, that's true. tell ourselves. It's fine. It's fine. It's <laughs> fine. Right, so then we're on to the main events. AJ Styles versus Dean Ambrose. Slow start. Yeah, so I said the same thing in my notes. Start to slow, but ended up pretty good, I thought. Yeah. Um, It looks as though at the beginning the chemistry wasn't there. Hmm. Um, because you know AJ is very precise. He's very efficient. He's very good. Good. Just, yep. He's excellent. <laughs> he's and Dean Ambrose's offense is different. It's brawling and that sort of thing. So uh, you know, when the match first started, I was sort of thinking, oh, the, the styles are. I don't want to say clashing. <laughs> uh, the, the the styles do clash. Yeah, yeah. And it doesn't do a bit. really gel that well. Mm. But as the match went on, I thought it was very good. Um, yeah, I think about it. I think AJ's playing the heel very well at the minute. Very well, yeah. Um, he's over, and mm-hmm. the crowd love him. Yeah. But at the same time, he's he's still a heel. Yeah, and he's yeah. still doing things enough to make people be like, but like, to boo him and for him to get that heel reaction. But he's always going to have the um, I don't like to use the term, but marks yeah. on his side. Yeah, pretty much. It's going to have people like me and you rooting for him. <laughs> yep. So, um, but in the end, I thought it was a solid match, and uh, AJ won heelish. Yes, the ref got knocked down. Uh, AJ Styles used Dick, the uh, good old fashioned move, the Dicky kick. And, uh, uh, yes. <laughs> the Dick kick. And uh, got him into the Styles Clash and won. And AJ Styles is now a WWE champion. What the hell is happening? And <laughs> this is a crazy time to be a WWE <laughs> fan. We've got what? Kevin Owens as the WWE Universal Champion. Yeah. And we've got AJ Styles as the WWE World Champion. Bizarre. Um, awesome. <laughs> it's very bizarre. I don't know if at the beginning of the year I'd have. <laughs> Yeah, I sort of thought this was gonna gonna be the case, but exactly. um, I'm happy with the direction we're going in. Very happy, now. yes. And yeah. I'm super happy for AJ. He's he deserves it. Um, Absolutely. I don't know what sort of plans WWE had for him when they brought him in initially, but I think the reaction and the merchandise sales and how completely over he is with everybody yeah, yeah. is sort of just won the back office over, and he is now the champion, and that's great. Excellent. Uh, yeah, who could have called it? Oh, that's right. Me. I called it. In fact, I was the only one who said AJ would win. Yeah, you were, yeah. I get a point. Which means I win this week's, or this month's, whatever, bi-weekly bet. Hooray. For a change. For a change. This brings me the grand total up to nine points for Sunny and seven points for me. Still still <laughs> slipping behind. Slipping behind. Are you clawing it back? I am. I need the points. Yeah. <laughs> you do <laughs> desperately need the points. I do. Um... But yeah, great. Awesome backlash. Great. Yeah, very good. Much better than I thought it was uh, ever going to be. Um, Same here. And for that, I'm happy. Me too. More of that, please. WWE. Can we... i just say something. I uh-huh, have, yeah. I wish JBL would stop calling the Hype Bros the Hype Brothers. <laughs> yeah. Because that is annoying. I wish JBL would just stop. In general. Yeah, full stop. <laughs> That's just it. Just, just leave. Just completely <laughs> stop. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I hate the term the Hype Brothers. Yeah, same here. Uh... So yeah, Monday Night War. Um, it was a good war, I thought. Loved the opening segment again. Yeah, very good. Oh, God, it was good. Yeah. Um, so it was yeah, Mick Foley uh, in the ring with uh, Charlotte. A uh, lot of sort of back and forth. It's good for him, I watch it. Wait, no. Um, I'm, I'm, I was thinking SmackDown, sorry. The oh. the opening segment was fine on Raw. It yeah, was the women's. Was I, I was expecting... You think it was SmackDown? I That's was. Fine. Yeah, rewind. <laughs> so I'm all over the place today. Don't worry. That's fine. You're not well. You can be forgiven. Thank you. Um, but yeah, it was a good 
uh, segment to open with, I thought. Um, just puts a focus on the women, which I like. Uh, so Mick Fred ended up making a triple threat match for that night to determine who's going to face Charlotte at uh, Clash of Champions. At COC. Cock. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so Shasha Banks versus Bailey versus Dana Brooke, who slapped her menstrual in the face. Oh. Oh. For a big pop, surprisingly. I think I feel... I'm really rooting for Dana. Hmm. Because I just think she's been dealt a, a crappy hand. A little bit. And I think, <laughs> um, you know, her turning on Charlotte is a way for... Maybe the fans to come on side as well. Yeah. Um, That's fine. This match happened straight away, did, did it? It did, yeah. Yeah. Well, it was pretty good, actually. Yeah, it was good. I, I did enjoy it. Um, yeah. And they were, again, this is a case of the women being given time. Yeah, exactly. So they've been given plenty of time to wrestle. I mean, that's that's the long and short of it. They're, <laughs> they're there to wrestle and they've been given time to wrestle. So I um, thought it was a solid match. The ending bugged me. Okay. Um. So, if you haven't seen it, the end of the match, basically, um, Sasha pinned Bailey. Yes. Um, uh, ba- Bailey delivered a uh, Bailey to Bailey to Dana, and then Sasha rolled her up. A dodgy roll up. But <laughs> both of their, like, everyone's shoulders were on the mat. Yeah. So, Bailey's shoulders were on the mat for Sasha to get the win. But during this, Sasha's, Sasha's, so- Jesus Christ, <laughs> that's hard to say. It is. Sasha's shoulders. Sasha's <laughs> shoulders were on the mat, you know, while she was pinning. So technically, nobody wins. Yeah. Now, I don't know if this is going to be a case in point going, you know, next week on Raw Maybe. for Bailey. And so she can say, look, well, you know, I know I lost the match, but also this happened. Could be. What because, you know, um, the rumor was that they'd scratched um, Sasha versus Charlotte mm. and, you know, they were going to sort of do something else. Um, I think that might happen. I think Maybe. it's still going to be a triple threat. I think so. Could be. Um just simply because of that crappy finish, and I think people have pointed it out. So, yeah, yeah. Um, if that was the plan, then fine, they've executed it perfectly. Um, if it wasn't the plan, it certainly will be now, I think, because yeah. people have pointed it out. I'd be surprised if it gets ignored me. anyway, put it that way. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, so, after that, we had some backstage, uh, backstage stuff with uh, Kevin Owens, who is uh, very entertaining, as always. He's awesome. Yep. And then uh, Jericho was there as well, who is hilarious. Ah. This, this, uh, the Jericho stuff at the minute for me is just gold. Yeah. It's so funny. <laughs> so, so good. Um, Felipe, that's what they call Felipe, him. Yeah. <laughs> they call him Tom Phillips Felipe. I love that they call him different names. Um, and he's, uh, he's an idiot. Idiot, yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's so, it's just so good. Jericho has really embraced, um, this character that he's portraying at the minute. And uh, we say it all the time. We're big Jericho fans here. Yes, very big. On the Sonny and Finn show. Um, but, He's just so good. He's so good. He's so good. Best one of his career. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so after that, we had a match. Uh, Bo Dallas versus a tiny, tiny man. Um, <laughs> so, uh, Bo got quite an ominous promo to start with, uh, which I like, quite liked, actually. Yes, I um, enjoyed it. Ominous Bo is ominous. Uh, Bo ended up winning because of what he did. Bo leave. I believe in Bo, I believe and I in Bo. believe in this if it's going to go somewhere. Yeah, I hope so. Um, what I didn't enjoy was the crowd chanting, let's go Jabba. Yeah, I don't yeah. like that. I don't no. think that's... Well, first of all, firstly, I don't think it's very respectful, because no. clearly he is a wrestler, and yeah, exactly. he's he's jobbing on Raw. He's been paid to do a job. Yeah. It's... And so, yes, he is a Jabba, technically, but don't... Don't be I just, don't, I just <laughs> don't think <laughs> don't it's very crowd. respectful to yeah. chant, let's go Jabba. Yeah, it's... Yeah. Not a big fan of these uh, smoggy crowds recently. No. Um, eh, whatever. I mean, we, you know, people would class us as marks, I imagine. Yeah, probably. But there isn't, I wouldn't go to Raw and chant, let's go Jabba. No. I'd cheer for the good guys, be with the bad guys. Yeah. So that's what wrestling is. Yes, exactly. Yeah. I think we're the, we're good smarks. I think so. <laughs> we, we know what's up. Yeah, we're not, we're not arseholes with it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so yeah, after that, we had the highlight reel, the ch- good show ago. Uh, originally, his guest was going to be Kevin Owens, but he was replaced by Sami Zayn. Um, he said, because Sami Zayn is the lowest of the low, uh, whereas Owens is the highest of the high. Yes. He got on the floor. He's speaking on the microphone. <laughs> it's quite funny. Uh, but yeah, it's good. Good Sami promo. Um, make himself sound good, because he's travelling well to make himself, because he wanted to be good like guys like Chris Jericho. Yeah. But now, Chris Jericho is just Kevin Owens' bitch. Oh, oh snap. And then uh, Jericho smacked him around the face with his phone. 
and hit the code breaker. Which sounded like it hurt, to be honest. <laughs> it did, yeah. Um, really entertaining segment. Yeah. Uh, it's Sami Zayn's in a weird place at the minute because obviously, I mean, he made it very clear in the promo that um, he wants the Universal Championship. Yep. Uh, yep. Which I would love to see one day. Yep. Um, but I'm happy for him to enter into a feud with Jericho. Mm-hmm. Um, both guys are great, and they'll put on a great match. Yes, the match at is- Clash of Champions. Yes, I can say that match made later that night for the Clash of Champions between those two. Uh, good. Yes, very good. <clears throat> and after that, we had another match: uh, Cesaro versus Sheamus Five. Yeah, so this is match five of the Best of Seven series, and we said last week that we are actually quite enjoying the Best of Seven series yeah. more than we thought that we would do. Yeah. Exactly. Um, Sheamus went three 0 up. Mm-hmm. Um, Cesaro pulled it back, uh, pulled one back in London. Yep, yep. Which wasn't televised, but they did show the footage of it um, on Raw. Yep, yep. And um, this was another good match. And what I liked about it is that it showed a different side of Cesaro. Yeah, that's cool. The way he won won with the uh, roll up. Yeah. So, you know, win by any means necessary. Exactly. I've got a lot of time for that sort of mentality. And um, I did, I I really liked it. Mm. uh, Actually, I I smiled and laughed when when I saw it. I was like, that's that's, that's clever. Yeah, that's cool. You know, Cesaro obviously has the disadvantage because of his injuries. So now he's got to do whatever he can to claw it back. And um, that's what, that, that's that's really clever booking on the part of WWE, in my opinion. Yes, very good. Have Cesaro cheat to win because it's uncharacteristic, but he knows he has to do it. Exactly. So he's he's, he's doing some kind of heroic comeback. <laughs> yeah, good stuff. I like it. Um, that's going to finish a Clash of Champions. I mean, I think that's yeah, the plan. Uh, so. Have Cesaro win next week, and then the week after that is Clash of Champions. Mm-hmm. So um, in fact, Clash of Champions is not this weekend, but next weekend, isn't it? Yes. So yes. there's one more Raw until Clash of Champions. Yep. So okay. more match there, and then yeah, the final. The final be at Clash, which is you know perfect. Yeah. Exactly. Um, interesting to see who wins. Yeah, me too. Um, yeah, good one. Um, so after that, we had the uh, backstage thing with uh, Seth Rollins confronting Mick Foley. Uh, still not sure if Seth is going to supposed to be a good face or bad guy in this situation. Mm, unclear. Um, I think it's mid-turn. Yeah, he, I mean, he's not. I don't, I don't know what he is. I don't, I don't. You're right. I mean, I'm mean, with you. I'm not sure what he's supposed to be. Yeah, he's acting heelish. But he's fighting the heel. Mm. So, um, are the lines just blurred now? And, you know, fans just chant for who, cheer for whoever they want? Is the Maybe. good and evil thing now gone? Is Who knows? Maybe. Either way, I like Seth. I mean, yeah, um, me too. It's, it'd be difficult for him to be a smiley, yeah, nice exactly. heel. Yeah, because... Can't turn. Hi, guys. I love the fans now. Like CM Punk Smile. when they turned him that last time and he was tagging up with Daniel Bryan and he was smiling and waving. Yeah. You just think, this sucks because... Weird. This he's not a likable person. Um, <laughs> he's you not know, this guy. In real you life. can tell when people, you know, just aren't comfortable with being good yeah. guys because they're just not good. Like Baron Corbin, could you imagine Baron Corbin being a good guy? <laughs> no, they're no. not. And could I mean, you know, it's easy for I think it's easy for a good guy to become a bad guy. Yeah, because you know that that I think is something you can. You can believe it. Act. Yeah, but turning a bad guy. Into a good guy, yeah, is difficult because it's such, it's such a change of character. They're a bad guy at the start for a reason, yeah, and to change them all of a sudden, that's why. I mean, I think it's it worked sort of for Dean Ambrose because the Shield were over, even though they were bad guys at first, yeah. But Rollins doesn't come across as a good guy. No, I agree. CM Punk didn't come across as a good guy. Yeah. Um. So I mean, it'd be like it's like turning Sergeant Slaughter into a good guy. <laughs> yeah. It's not not possible. Weird. Uh, but yeah, good points. So next match was uh, Elisa Fox versus Nia Jax. After Elisa Fox smacked her in the face with a metal box. Ouch. Which is brilliant. <laughs> it was brilliant, yeah. And it's so funny. I'm glad they showed it again. Yeah. yeah. I really wanted to see it again. Yeah. And this is uh, Nia Jax's first actual opponent, kind of. Yeah, um, first sort of main. Yeah. You know, she, Elisa Fox is in WWE 2K. That's the way we can. <laughs> yeah. That's the way we can judge these opponents that she's fighting. Exactly. It's been ten years. Blimey. Has she really? Yeah, yeah. Long time. Has she ever been the champion? I think uh, she was think champion. Diva's Eva, champion for a while. <laughs> Diva's. Um, but yeah, it was, it was, I thought it was really good. Uh, Nia Jax looks super strong, throwing um, Elisa Fox around the ring, smashing her into the barricade by her hair. Ouch. And she speared her through mm, the the, uh, the guardrail. Very nice. Um, very good. 
Ma- yeah. makes Nia look really strong because at least she is taking on somebody who has got the experience and has been there a long time. Yep, yep. Um, even if it is only Alicia Fox, she is still a former yep. Divas, Divas champion. So um, N- Nia keeps looking strong. I don't know what this is. To, I have no idea where this goes. Uh, yep. I don't know what, where Nia, what happens for Nia. Good question. Because eventually she's going to have to fight for the women's title. She's going to have to. Yeah. Uh, but if she's going to continue this, it's like when she was in NXT and that sort of problem arose where she was just destroying people week in, week out. Then she entered into the title picture and mm. lost to lost. Bailey. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Twice. I think my prediction is she's going to, Bailey's going to win the championship and then Nia Jax is going to like come down and attack her afterwards and end up winning the title. And then Bailey's got to like come back and show her heart and beat the big Nia Jax. And eventually, because I go with that whole storyline. Okay. Which you've seen under times before. But <laughs> I think we're good. Yeah, sure. I mean, that's my prediction. Um, I really like Naya. Um, yeah, I do. And I think the women's division is looking good. But it's what is quite nice is that you've got the women's championship and that's being contested somewhere else. And then you've still got this women's feud going on yeah. elsewhere on the card. Exactly. So there's, you know, there's more women's wrestling on the card <laughs> that yeah. now, as, whereas before it was sort of just, you know, once on a card for, you know, about. Two minutes or something. <laughs> yeah. If that. Yeah. But yeah, much better now. Good. Um, so we had some New Day stuff. Uh, New Day coming out of the ring, being entertaining. Uh, they were but, pouring bootios out of boots. Yeah, that was a bit weird. Boots, yeah, yeah. I get it. They make sure you ain't boot. Boots, yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, they referenced, they referenced how bad the old day segment was last week. Um, just making fun of it, which is good. That's had a lot crap. of crap online. Yeah, it has. And it was terrible and it was deserves terrible. the crap that it got. Um, and I'm glad that they, they brought this up because it was a terrible segment. It was. So bad. Uh, so the, the club came down and interrupted. Uh, said very few words, which is good. And uh, they had a match. Uh, Xavier Woods and Kirby Kingston versus Anthony Gallows. I actually out loud when when the commentary said that that match was going to happen. I literally went, why? Yeah, I give me better way in the minutes. So why is this happening now? Let's we'll wait until... Yeah. It's like, this is surely going to happen at Clash of Champions as well, so yeah. why have it now? Weird. Uh, but I guess Anderson Gallows needed more momentum after last week's debacle. Um, and it was good, I thought. Um, club looked much better than they did. They have been. They're more like the bad badasses they used to be. So but that's what comedy. needs to happen. And I think exactly. I think that's the sort of reaction that, that that segment last week got on the internet. It's like, mm. why are the club doing this when they shouldn't be doing this? They should be... This is not what the club is. The club is they're ass kickers, you know. Exactly. They're, they're you know they're these big guys, um, and they they are the commentary say every week they're one of the most decorated tag teams in the world. Yeah. So treat them like it. Exactly. Like have no them more. go out there and beat people up. But have them go out there and look like the badasses that they are or were portrayed to be. Don't have them doing yeah. these shit comedy segments because no one cares for it. Exactly. No more comedy bollocks. Um, but yeah, they ended up winning with the magic killer. Good. Clean as well. Clean. Clean as a whistle. Um, I really hope that they take the titles from the New Day at Clash of Champions. Not Me because too. I don't like the New Day, but because I think the club need it. Yeah, I agree. Need, they need some uh, proof that they're as good as they think they are. Or they say they are. Or as good as the hype would suggest. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Absolutely. I mean, um, I mean, there's no doubt that they are really good. Mm. And they started off really strong. Yeah, yeah. Um, the split from AJ, I think, hurt them maybe a little bit because... A little bit. Um, you know, when you had AJ there, you've got that big star power there. Mm. Um, I don't know if it was sort of too soon to maybe split them up, unless there's bigger plans for it. Maybe. Um, time will tell, but uh, for now, I think the club definitely need the tag team titles. Yeah, agreed. And yeah, so after that, we had Jinder Mahal coming down to the ring, being announced as the man that comes in peace. Uh, mm-hmm. And he is found in a piece yeah. uh, during his time off. This is a very boring segment. Got a very boring boy, smaller tone. Who's just gonna... <laughs> the problem I have with this well. isn't the gimmick. It's why has it taken them three, four weeks to get to this? Yeah. Why did they not just do this from the start? Yeah, it's a bit weird. But you, you got interrupted by all people. Jack Swagger. Uh, when when <laughs> this happened, I thought, no, don't go down this route. Yeah. Please do not do this. I'm already bored. Stop making it worse. No, no, it wasn't that I was <laughs> oh. worried about. It was the. Uh, Jinder Mahal coming down has the, oh, yeah, right. the uh, it's the Indian gentleman yeah. finding peace and all that sort of stuff, and he's being interrupted by the all American American. S- yeah, um, didn't think of that. The day after nine eleven, <laughs> of all things, <laughs> oh, and I was idea. sitting there thinking, no, WWE, do Come not on. go down this route. <laughs> Thankfully, Jinder did win. Yeah, 
it wasn't a good match, I didn't think. No, it's very boring. Boring match, got boring finisher. Crowd didn't care. It's like an occasional like USA chant, but meh. Even the commentators sounded bored in the match. We like, the people got the biggest reaction. Yeah. We the people. Right at the beginning. Uh, and that's all that Jack Swagger's good for. Pretty much. We'll get to Jack Swagger in a little while, but yes. uh, um, this sucks, and this is not a very good way to push Jinder. It's not. It's done. The mid card's um, a very interesting place at the minute because it feels lost. There's a bit. Because uh, uh, Rusev has been around for a while, for a few weeks. It's like there's no US title there. It's just like, why, what are we fighting for? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, that that's my biggest thing with NXT. Yeah. It's like, what when the World Championship isn't on there, when the tag team titles aren't being contested, what are these other guys fighting for? What, yeah. what, what are the likes of Ty Dillinger and Andrade Cien Almas? What are they all, what are they fighting for? That's true. And this Good is the problem point. on Raw now. Yeah. Good point. At, at least when the Cruiserweights come in um, next week, they're, well, and I'm still making assumptions here, uh, they're calling it a division, which yeah. says to me there's a championship sure, to fight there for. Sure. There has to be. Um, otherwise, what are they fighting for? They're just fighting exactly. for the sake of it every week? What's yeah. the point? Strange one. Yeah, join that championship. Um, we'll find out next week. We'll find out. Can't wait. Um, so yeah, after that, there's like a backstage segment with Jack Swagger breathing at Tom backstage. <laughs> He's like, Jack Swagger, any comments? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, Thanks, there's right. like, um, yeah, so we right, understand right. that your uh, your contract with oh, yeah, with Raw right. is expiring. It's like, how long was his contract? <laughs> yeah, two like, weeks. <laughs> like, Raw's been a separate brand for like a month. Yeah. So you had a four week contract with Raw, which is now coming to an end. What do you think about it? <laughs> <laughs> Thank yeah. you very much, Jack. Promo of the year. Yeah. So better uh, moving. <laughs> <laughs> so then we had uh, Enzo and Cass versus the Shining Stars. No, we nope. didn't. It's Epico versus Enzo. My apologies. <laughs> But uh, it was a match that happened. The Shiny uh, Stars are quickly becoming my one of my favourite things on Raw. Yeah, really? Quietly, yeah. Yeah. Because I like how they come out with the, the Puerto Rico timeshare leaflets and they're giving oh, yeah. them out and stuff like that. That's, That's funny, really yeah. funny. Um, go on, sorry, Karen. I, uh, yeah. I just needed to get that out there. I need people to know that <laughs> the Shining Stars are my guys. Now. Yeah, they're okay, yeah. I like, them. I like what they're doing. Uh, but there's lots of interference in this match. Uh, you think uh, Big Gas kicks one of them. Primo. One point, Primo. It was uh, a stiff kick as well. Yeah, like, right to the face. Ouch. Uh, yeah, Epico ended up winning by shenanigans. I think uh, Primo was holding down Enzo's legs. And yeah, it's fine. Good. Another win for the for the Sunny Lars. See? See what I said? See? Mm. I'm, I, I'm, I'm noticing these things. They are. The Shining Stars. I don't know what. I have no idea what's going on with Enzo and Cass, but them aside, I like the Shining Stars. I like that they're picking up wins, and this can only mean good things for them going forward, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. Good stuff. Um, after this, we had a backstage segment with uh, Seth and Kevin Owens. Uh, apparently, if Seth gets involved in the main events, there are going to be consequences. Ooh, I think mean? this was the good segment that I was alluding to at the start of oh, yeah. Raw, but it wasn't at the start of Raw. It was... It was later. Yeah. This was really good. This is the one where Mick Foley came in and said, that's enough, you yes. go. That's yeah, I thought this was really, really good. These two I together, thought. like, incredible chemistry. Like, yeah, they're great. Um, cause both, are good at prom- both are good promo guys. Um, and I think the chemistry is just there. You know when it, mm. you know when it is just there, when you've got, like, like the rock and Stone Cold? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's that sort of... I think, it, I do believe it's that sort of level. I think Seth and Owens is that, can be that sort of level. Agreed. Uh, look forward to the match at uh, TOC. Uh, yeah, so there's going to be consequences, apparently. Hmm, who knows Ooh. what that's going to be. So now it brings us to a main event, which is uh, Kevin Owens versus Reigns. And if Reigns wins, he gets added to the main event at Clash of Champions. Enjoyable match. Yeah. <clears throat> it was slow, but good. It was slow. Um, Owens is the headlock master. Chin lock, city. <laughs> but uh, I, li- I I did enjoy it. I thought it was good. It had my yeah. attention. Um Raw's really stepped up the last few weeks, the last couple of weeks. Yeah. Um, in terms of wrestling quality and match quality, and even in storytelling. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I think that this match ended um in the perfect way. Yep. Uh, so Seth Rollins ended up attacking Kevin Owens uh, middle of the match, which means Owens wins by DQ. Oh snap! Also, Finley was there. Oh, hi, Finley. Um, <laughs> but yeah, then Matt ended up getting. Just call him Fat Finley. That's a that's a hey Finley. Oh. Hi, Finley. Yeah. Just that he was called Fit Finley before. He was. I don't know if you were. No, I wasn't making with him. He didn't look fat, did he? Didn't notice. Yeah, you only ever see him in a suit backstage dragging yeah, exactly. people away. That's all. I'm pretty sure that's his job. <laughs> pretty much, yeah. 
He's, a, he's like a bodyguard guy. Hey, Fit, do you want a job? Yeah, sure. What's my job going to be? Well, just dragging people away in backstage segments and other bits. Yeah. Okay, sure. Good lifter. <laughs> um, but yeah, so Seth Rollins did end up, end up getting involved, which means there's going to be consequences of some kind. Don't know what that's going to be yet, but we'll find out next week. I like this um, tension between Mick Foley and Seth Rollins. Mm, um, and again, like, like Owens and Rollins, I think Mick Foley has come into some of his best work with this as well recently his best recent work because he's you know getting angry and all that sort of stuff and I really like that and I think yeah. uh, this little rivalry or little feud he's got going on with Seth Rollins is um, is good for good for everybody yeah I agree um, so Matt ended up getting restarted um, I ended up slamming like Roman Reigns at the steps and uh, lots of back and forth going on it's a good match I thought and uh, yeah Kevin ended up winning after Rusev of all people came down and interrupted uh, two interruptions in one match and then uh, yeah I mean to counter that into Power Power Bomb and one so it's going to be a singles match at Clash of Champions good and the this is, the reason I think this is the, the ending was good is because I mean uh, I think it needed that interference from Seth in the middle mm-hmm. yep, because okay. that's obviously going to you know it's like another branch to this story yep. that we'll see next week when the Seth and Mick Foley thing comes to light mm-hmm. um uh, I had a feeling Rusev and Roman Reigns wasn't done. Yeah, I agree. Rusev has obviously been off on his honeymoon and um, whatever. Uh, he's now back and the Reigns-Rusev feud can continue. So that gives Reigns something else to do away yeah. from the world, from the Universal Championship. And now we can have a good feud between, good singles feud between Owens and Rollins going into Clash of Champions. So yes. um, I think WWE did this right. Yeah, I think so. Because the, the, they've nearly filled, they've pretty much filled the card for Clash of Champions yeah, in one night. Yeah. Perfect. And now great. there's one more week of build up, then the pay per view itself. So this was great. Good to see Rusev back. Yep. And um, it was great to see him sort of standing tall um, as as the heel US champion. Yeah, yeah. To, to close the show. Good stuff. And uh, yeah, that was it for, for Raw. So it was a good episode of Raw this week, I thought. I'm very solid. Yeah, good. I like it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, looking forward to Last of Champions. It's strange to have Next week. consistency. It is. And that's <laughs> what we get. I mean, there is a couple of missteps in there, of course. And the, yeah, in yeah. a three-hour show, it'd be almost impossible to have a completely flawless three-hour raw broadcast. Yeah, seriously. Um, so, yeah, that means it's Smackdown that's happened earlier today, as we're recording, or yesterday. Wait. Yeah. Smackdown was on Tuesday night. It's Wednesday today, so yeah. yeah. New track of days. Uh, so yes, much earlier today. Um, but yeah, Smackdown. Good opening segment, which you did earlier. Great opening segment. Um, really, champ that went to camp. Really good segment. Very good. Uh, very surreal seeing AJ Styles with the belts. Um, and then uh, Cena came down. He's back. Doop, 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 doop. He tweeted earlier on in the day to beat the man. Oh yeah. To be the man, you have to beat the man, or at least tie the man. <laughs> yeah. Cena is coming back. Um, we, I think we mentioned this a few weeks back that when Cena comes back, he's going to be re-entered into the feud with AJ Styles. Yeah. I'm happy that AJ Styles has the championship and we're not just going to sort of go through the motions again with this. Yeah, yeah. Um, Ambrose came out. Mm-hmm. Pissed off. Pissed off, yep. And that this led to some really excellent promo work from not... Only Cena, mm. who really goaded Dean Ambrose with the Stone Cold was right, um, yeah, you yeah. know, you've not stepped up and all this sort of stuff. And, um, you know, saying that he, you know, did the initial low blow on AJ. Yeah, so yeah. AJ's, you know, only done what you've done. And then Dean Ambrose came back with Cena. It was really good. It was aggressive. And, um, you know, it started a whole new story arch now. Yeah. So now we're sort of pushing forward with this, this triple threat. Um going you know into no mercy which is the next smackdown exclusive pay-per-view yep. uh, and this this has me really excited for the next few weeks of smackdown yeah me too uh ambrose called tina a lazy part-timer oh snap and uh yeah, yeah great great stuff really really good stuff shane o'mac came down made the triple mm-hmm. threat for um no mercy and made this is smackdown typical typical yeah. smackdown tag match uh tag match for the main event <laughs> yeah and it was going to be cena and dean ambrose against AJ Styles and a partner of his choosing should he be able to find one. Yeah. Which is good. Um, so yeah, the first match of the night was uh, the Usos versus the Hype Bros. Rematch from Backlash. Ah, the Hype Brothers. Yeah, the Hype Brothers. <laughs> um, yeah, we just have the same music. 
Yeah. And it was... Yeah, uh, for fine. now. For now. It's a fine match. It was a bit slow, a bit uh, quick. Um, it just seemed sure, like... What do they call it? A second chance rematch? Is that what they called it? Something like that. So now, are the Usos the number one contender for the tag titles, or what? I mean... Who knows? I'm not really, they didn't really explain it. They just said, oh, this was a second chance rematch from... Uh, from Backlash and yeah. I was like okay so maybe the winner of this is the number one contenders um, but nothing was mentioned I mean the Usos won yeah uh, with the splash it was fine yeah all fine uh, yeah yeah match. it was just fine it was, <laughs> it was nice to see the Usos picking wins up yeah um, nice to see their heel persona you know keep developing and I would to be honest I actually would quite like to see them win the titles yeah sure um, you know with, with Slater and Rhino being good guys um, you know, it's. I think it makes sense for a heel team to beat them down the line. Agreed. And if this Usos thing is to be believable, I think it maybe needs to be them. Yeah. For them to then lose it down the line to American Alpha. Yep, I agree. That'd be good. Here I am predicting the future. <laughs> uh, after that, we had a uh, Miz, Dick, and Daniel Bryan segment. It's going to make notes for about me. Uh, the all Ted stuff, and it was good. <laughs> it was fine. Um, it was fine. So basically, the Miz came down and was. You know, saying that he, you know, he's the main event, all the usual stuff. He's beating everybody and he's proving people wrong. Mm. Stigler came down, usual sort of stuff of, oh, your wife helped you win and all this sort of thing. And, um, I want a rematch, just right. me and you, no valet, no Maurice, no blah, blah, blah. Uh, Maurice started talking. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah. Then Daniel Bryan came down, um, and basically said that, um, you know, that match was going to happen. But the Miz said, um, "Until you get, until I get what I want, which is my contract renegotiating, um, you are not going to get what you want." Yeah, he and stormed off. He stormed off um, out of the crowd. Yeah, the Miz was the Miz was awesome. He's he, very, uh, he, he's very good. He he really was. I thought he I thought he he played his part, and he's doing it so well at the minute. Yeah, um, one of the top guys on SmackDown without question. Great, and um, I just think right now, Miz is one of the big time players. Yeah. It's awesome. Um, so I've said backstage, quick backstage thing with AJ trying to recruit uh, Baron Corbin. Baron Corbin saying, "I don't want to beat your partner. I want to fight you for your, for your title." Ooh. And this is what I like yeah. about this is what I quite like about SmackDown. Yeah, you've got these different guys, these guys that you wouldn't usually see going for the championship, staking their stating their claim for the championship. Yeah, yeah. Do I want to see Baron Corbin versus AJ Styles for the title? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Oh yeah, I do. Yeah, why? That'd be great. Yeah. It'd be something different. It's refreshing. Yeah, and I think that's what so uh, that's what I like about SmackDown and the SmackDown roster. Yeah, I agree. Uh, so yeah, the match um, it was Baron Corbin versus Apollo Cruz. It's a rematch from their uh, pre-show, like Backlash, and it never really started because uh, Corbin attacked uh, Apollo before the match, uh, gave him an end of days on the outside, and then bloody Zack Swagger like, twice in one week interrupted <laughs> him, um, and he looks like a loose bag. And he sounds like a douchebag. <laughs> and is this a heel turn? Is this a new gimmick? Nope, because he just still went going with the like we the people bollocks. Bleh. I didn't understand <laughs> this, right? I mean, it was when Jack Swagger came down, I was like, wait, Jack Swagger's on SmackDown. <laughs> yeah. So his contract, his four week contract on Raw really has expired. <laughs> yeah. So it looks like this, they're sort of just going to do some Baron Corbin, Jack Swagger feud. Yeah. Right, I like Jack Swagger. Why? <laughs> if they do it right, because yeah. Jack Swagger's he, he's a legit, he, he looks legit. He's, he's a yeah. big guy. He, he's a he is a former world champion, but when he, when he comes down to the ring with a backwards baseball cap, a black t shirt, and jeans on, yeah, then gets insane. in the ring, and says, <laughs> "Ladies and gentlemen, it's the Rolling Stones." Yeah, what? And I was like, "Well, that died on its ass like, <laughs> yeah. real quick." And then he started sort of talking about I don't know. It was a weird, it was a really strange promo. He was Very talking strange. strangely. Um, I don't know what he was saying just wasn't really making any sense until eventually he got to the We The People part and everyone was like, oh yeah, it's Jack Swagger, get in. So this is this is weird. I mean, I do like Jack Swagger and I do think Jack Swagger can be good if used in the correct way. This is a very strange way to bring him in. Or at, least, very strange. I at thought, least give him lines to say. Yeah, exactly. Well, like I said, I thought it was going to be some sort of new gimmick, some sort of heel turn maybe. But no, he's still going to be witty people stuff. So I think it's going to be a I face. Was. I think it's going to be a face going against heel Baron Corbin. Yeah, Ugh, weird. I like Corbin, and I'm fine with it if done right because Jack Swagger can be good. Yeah, he can be. Remember when he was world champion? Me neither. Um, but I was, you know what? <laughs> with, with that, I was really when Jack Swagger cashed in that Money in the Bank and won the world title. I was like, yes, yeah, I this, mean, I was this could be 
brilliant. Yeah. And they just, and they just didn't do it right. <laughs> yeah. They just I, didn't do it right. I thought the same thing. I thought, oh, this is someone new got that. That's cool. It's been the main event. But then it went nowhere. I think they've moved Jack Swagger to SmackDown because the reason, again, this is like the, the mid card on Raw is just jam packed. Yeah, agreed. So if they're moving to SmackDown, um, you know, maybe he could eventually go for the US title, maybe even the world title if done right. Yeah. We'll see. But um, I think it could be good. I just think this was a weird way to bring him in. Yeah, very weird. Uh, so after that, we had a federal five-way women's match to determine who's going to be the number one contender for the new SmackDown Women's Championship. Uh, we had the walking migraine Naomi, Naomi <laughs> the flashy colours and uh, versus Nikki versus Carmella versus Alexa Bliss. He still looks like Harley Quinn and goddamn. Hell yeah. Ooh. Versus Natalia. And How it was good. you guys? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. She did it again in this match, and I'm just thinking she's not even a good guy anymore. So why is she doing this nonsense? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, very strange. So uh, strange. But it was a good match, I thought. Um, it was actually. Um, I really enjoyed it. Again, yeah. just a, a brilliant showcase for what these women can do. Yeah. Don't don't make them do stupid promos where they interrupt each other with no music. That's just nonsense. <laughs> yeah, don't do bizarre. that. Give them the platform to perform and let them go out there and do it. And what I found interesting is these matches can usually be quite awkward, but it seems like they've just, like these these five women, six on Sunday, they've just like, perfected it like straight away. Yeah. They've, like, they've done it brilliantly. Yeah, it's great. Nice a lot. Um, so Nicky was about to fi- uh, finish her uh, on the Italia, and then he got interrupted by a super kick by Carmella. And then Carmella got thrown out by Alexa List, and Alexa ended up pinning and Carmella. Uh, Nikki, sorry, for the win. Yay. Yay. Alexa, yes, good. Can't wait to see them pigtails walking down to the ring more often. Yes. Hot damn. Gosh, diggity darn. Oh. <laughs> God damn it. Um, yes, good. So uh, after that, we had AJ Styles trying to recruit uh, Kane for the tag team match later. Yeah. Uh, didn't work. No, just, just laughed. Laughed, at him, laughed in his face. Yeah. It's his game. And then uh, we had Heath later signing his contract. Um, yeah, it was fine. I didn't know what was going to happen here. Like, <laughs> part of me almost thought that Rhino was going to turn on him. Yeah, I did. Like, instantly. Second. Because, like, it, it, Rhino didn't even get... You know, like, you get they have the name thing coming down the side. Oh, yeah. Rhino didn't even have that. It was yeah. just Heath Slater. Weird. So, um, you know, I thought, right, this is going to be all about Heath. Rhino's going to get pissed off. I do think that may be how this goes eventually. Probably, yeah. Um, But he did think he did thank Rhino, and I, but I don't know. Yeah. It was fine, and they said, they said they'll take on anyone, anywhere, any place, any time. And uh, who came down? It was the Ascension. Remember them? Yeah, me yeah. neither. Uh, yeah, weird face paint on. Yeah, they didn't fine. match their attire, which I haven't got time for. If you're going to do it, do it. Do it with the same colours that your attire is. Don't have yeah. red and black attire, then have white face paint. No. Yeah, it's true. A bit weird. Um, so then that match happened right there and then for the titles. Um, it wasn't a great match, honestly. The Ascension managed mm. to fuck up their one double team move. Um, yeah, <laughs> it, great. it wasn't it didn't exactly cover the ascension in glory no I think they might be on the way out to be on the today sorry lads you think be on the, you might be on the next releases uh, list possibly which is the same because they were so good in NXT they were just kind of were they though flatlined were they good in NXT yeah I thought so I mean I, I like to the ascension <laughs> yeah were they good though yeah I don't know because they were on their <laughs> way out of NXT when NXT started going on the WWE network really yeah I guess yeah, it's but when is. they when they screwed that double team move, yeah, I was like, was "Oh, was this nothing. sucks." Part of me thought they might win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For a second, maybe. I thought but it might be a good like, push for the attention. But, but when, when they came yeah. down, I was like, "Are they going to win this? Like, take the belt straight off Heath and Rhino?" Yeah, It'd be good, good push for the attention. But nope, because they they suck. Apparently. Unfortunately, they <laughs> suck. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, when they, Rhino ended up winning once again with the spear or core, and yeah, and then a win for Rhino. It is a shame because the Ascension, they don't suck. I mean, I don't think they're the world's greatest tag team. Yeah. No, they don't suck. They're just, I don't know, bad luck. Something hasn't gone right. Something's gone, yeah. I think it's, they're just getting, I don't know. I don't have to explain it. One of them got suspended, didn't he? Mm, yeah, that's true. And then the, they, the, the gimmick wasn't taken seriously when they first came up to the main yeah, roster, the which take. didn't help them at all. The JBL. It died straight away. It did, yeah. Because of JBL, probably. probably. Because he buried them. He did. Dickhead. And then he had a segment. There was even a segment where JBL clotheslined one of them, or both oh, of yeah. them. Weird. Like, so the ascension, the gimmick wasn't taken to. They got buried, literally straight away, and they 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 have not recovered from it. And um, 
if Finn is correct and they are indeed on their way out, must be said, it isn't a great surprise. Yeah. Shame. Shame. Um, so yeah, with the back, another backstage segment and Aza starts to get to partner. Uh, gets it delivered to him by uh, Danny Bryan and it's James Eldworth. You know, that guy, he got beaten up by Braun Strowman with no chin. Yeah, the guy with the offspring <laughs> tattoo and yeah. The, yeah, with no, with a weird face. Yeah. Like his face and neck are one. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, yeah, so, <laughs> that's that. Uh, yes, it's an interesting one. It's like, oh, okay, <laughs> sure, why not? I think he's had a bit of um, he's had a bit of meme coverage online. Yeah, yeah. So I think uh, them, yeah. WWE are capitalising on this as they, as they do. Yeah, he did get a big, big chair when he came on on screen. So yeah, yeah, I'm sure. I think yeah, okay. Uh, so after that, we had a Randy Orton Bray White segment. Uh, both said stuff, and then Roman came down and attacked Randy Orton. Got arcade. The end. Um, <laughs> Palmy was thinking Nothing. this could be a good time to bring Luke Harper back if he's fit. I agree. And, you know, because when, you know, I knew that the lights were going to come back on and that Randy Orton was going to get attacked. Yeah. My hope was that it was going to be Luke Harper and that this would sort of be the, his comeback. Cool. Instead, it was Rowan and we just knew that it was going to end in him getting RKO'd. And yeah. it was a very, well, it was a very Bray Wyatt promo. I get to be I mean, to be honest, it's we said this last week as well that this is becoming very familiar. Yeah. I mean, Randy definitely. Orton, he's been good since he came back, uh, and Bray Wyatt is Bray Wyatt, and he is very good. But yeah. at the same time, this is something that's becoming, um, yeah, it's just becoming very familiar, and it's it's no longer intriguing because you know that at the end of the feud, Bray Wyatt is going to come out losing. Yeah. Uh, and something needs to change. It's amazing to me that still Bray Wyatt hasn't held a singles title in WWE. Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? Or a title. He hasn't been a tag champion either, has he? No. But, um, you know, for all the hype and for all the bigging up of Bray Wyatt that happens, you know, nothing really ever comes of it. And it's a real shame and it's a it's a massive waste of talent. Yeah, I agree. Weird. Um, but Roman did have a new onesie, which looked nice, I thought. Onesie. <laughs> yeah, whatever that thing is. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and he had a colourful mask as he well. He did. Yeah, yeah, fine. It's fine. Uh, so let me just do the main events. Uh, Aza starts getting onto the ring, uh, followed by his partner, James Ellsworth, who then got attacked from behind by The Miz. Good. Um, yeah, good. Good. The Miz literally threw this guy, this poor little guy <laughs> around. Yeah. Like, he was nothing. Yeah, And in much. comparison to The Miz, he is literally nothing. Yeah. He's a tiny... He's You know what? He's the size of you. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Cheers. James Finsworth. <laughs> James Finsworth. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, you have a chin, it's fine. <laughs> Thanks. You have a bit of a chin. Uh, so yeah, um, the Miz was saying like, I'm the main event, I should be here. And uh, He held yeah. James Ellsworth up to the camera and said, this is the main event, I'm <laughs> yeah, the main exactly. event. Gave him the school crushing finale on the on the ramp and uh, proceeded to go to the ring to be AJ Styles' partner. Yeah. Good. Good. For some uh, reason, at this point, I thought the Miz had already fought earlier on in the night. Oh yeah. But he sure. hadn't, he'd just been in that segment, didn't he? Yeah. But that was good. Uh, good Very. Match, I thought. Um, starting the tag team match. Um, Cena wins, lol. Yeah, pinned the Miz after an AA, which I thought wasn't not the best decision. Um, it, it, to me, it was like a house show tag team match. Yeah, pretty much. Um, and yeah, Cena won. I didn't think he was going to lose on his first night back. I thought he might be the one to get the pinfall. And I did think the Miz would be the one to take said pinfall. Yeah, I guess it makes sense. But um, after the match... Dean Ambrose turned on Cena. Yep. Gave him dirty leads after the match. Was that a heel turn? Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. We'll find it next week, I guess. I think so, because, you know, the crowd were booing. Mm, they were. The, the crowd got really into, like, John Cena and the amount. They were. Well. Like, when, when he sort of said what he said about <laughs> Dean Ambrose having no balls and stuff like yeah. that, like, the it. crowd were like, Cena said balls. Cena, <laughs> Cena, yeah. Cena. And it's like, okay. So now, that's all you got to do. Now we like t- Cena? Okay. <laughs> oh, Cena said balls, so now we like him. Right. Yeah. Okay, that's that's that. So the crowd are quite <laughs> <laughs> the crowd are quite into Cena at the minute. So uh, has cool. Dean Ambrose turned? Uh, I think maybe. Maybe. It was, I think he needs it to want to uh, refresh his character a bit. To t- take him over the like edge. Well, the comedy stuff, w- the stuff with him being a face hasn't really worked. Yeah, I don't yeah, think. agreed. Uh, so yeah, I think a heel turn would be good for Dean Ambrose for his character. Agreed. To bring the best out of him. So that was SmackDown, um, was. and I thought it was. A good show this week. Yeah. I thought, to be honest, Backlash, Raw, and SmackDown were three very solid shows. Yeah, really great. 
Tonight is the final of the Cruiserweight Classic. What wrestling? <laughs> um, but this is wrestling that I don't feel like is a chore to watch. Yeah, yeah exactly. That said, I don't think Raw and SmackDown no, were chores this week. But um, okay. this I'm super excited for. Me too. Who do you have winning? So we've got TJ Perkins, mm-hmm. my friend. Your best friend. <laughs> my bestest friend in the whole world. <laughs> Apart from you and friend of the show, Steve. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> um, we have the Golden Star, Kota Ibushi. Mm. Grand Metalik. Yep, yep. And the other one. Good. <laughs> Who is it? Oh, of course, Zack Sabre Jr. Oh, of course. Uh, okay. Have a countryman. Well, yeah. How did we forget that? A fellow Jesus. countryman that we forgot. Of course. Who do you see winning? Um, so it's TJ Perkins versus Kota Ibushi. Who goes through? I think it's got to be Ibushi, hasn't it? I think so. Yeah. I'm about to like TJ Perkins. Um, Ibushi's just been, every match he's had has been amazing. Like, mind-blowingly phenomenal. Match of the contender. Yes. <laughs> I would would I'd like to see TJ Perkins go through. I, I mean, know yeah, sure. TJ I'm Perkins sure. gonna is going to be part of the cruiserweight division on Raw. Yep. Good, 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 now, good. would it be logical for somebody who has signed to Raw um, for the cruiserweight division to win this tournament to give that division a head start? Maybe. Like, like yeah, I, I, it makes sense because I guess announced. Oh, the winner of the cruiserweight championship is called the momentum behind him. Blah blah blah. Uh, so yeah, possibly. Mm. But I'm still going to say Kojibushi. I'm going to go to Kota Ibushi as well. Yeah. Well, have, so should we do predictions? Yeah, okay. Okay. It's what have happened by the time the podcast comes out, but that's fine. Yes. You'll know if he, who's won before we do. <laughs> kind of. Mm. How does time work? What? It's, yeah, time travel. Ah, okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, Ibushi versus... No, I'm this down. So yeah, we both said Ibushi. Okay. So, next match? Zack Sabre Jr. versus Grand Metalik. Yeah. Now, I I said from the beginning of this tournament that the final would be Kota Ibushi versus Zack Sabre Jr. They were the two biggest stars and two of the favourites going into the tournament. Um, Grand Metalik is going to be on Raw as well. True. Oh, it's tough because, I mean, it seems almost too obvious for it to be Zack Sabre Jr. versus Ibushi. He does a bit, doesn't it? But at the same time, I, I, I mean, I do think it's going to be those two. Yeah. I do think it's going to be Grand Metal League. It's the obvious answer, but yeah, I think so too. <laughs> to be honest with you. Our predictions are going to be the same, aren't they? So they what's are. the point? Yeah. And then, yeah, you've got, you're going to have Ibushi winning it as well? <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. So we'll scrap that because, yeah, scrap that, the, you know, we're, we're either both going to be right or we're both going to be wrong. Exactly, so yeah. that's just a point each. Pointless. Um... Well, yeah. Yeah, we'll either be pointless or... Uh, up, up, Points well, full. Points full. <laughs> either way, I'm excited for it. Yeah, it's going to be great. Uh, it's a two-hour live special, so they are padding it out with some other stuff as well. Cool. Isn't it NXT, like, in with it as well? Like, well, one whole thing? No. No? Oh, okay. <laughs> I well, don't know, actually. Actually, um, because um, Tommaso Ciampa and Johnny Gargano are in tag team action. I'm not okay. sure who they're fighting, though. I kind of figured it would be NXT and, and that all together in one... Well, no, because the NXT shows have already been taped. Oh, they have? Oh, okay. Well, it's good at them. <laughs> so, um, yeah. I mean, it's, it's good. Like, <laughs> Either way, I'm excited for it. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, been been a, it's been a really great tournament. Okay. Uh, I'm sad to see it end. Yeah, I am. I hope they do another one in the future. I think they um, will. I think it'll be yearly. Yeah, I hope so. Uh, but I am excited to see the Cruiserweight Division on War. I hope they handle it well. <laughs> yeah, me too. I hope <laughs> the crowd take to it well. That's yeah. one of the main things for me. Definitely, um, yeah. I hope it has a, a championship. Mm-hmm. Because you know this will give it, this will give us something to really look forward to every Monday. Yeah, yeah. It'd be like when the cruiserweights first came on to Nitro, well, yeah, when yeah. WCW first started getting the cruiserweights, and then they brought the cruiserweight championship in, and it was something different because you had the big guys on Nitro, you had the mid card on Nitro and the TV title and all that sort of stuff, and then you had the cruiserweight championship, um, and it, it it gave something completely different. It was like a you know a whole different segment of Nitro, and it was really good. And I Raw. Raw could do that with this cruiserweight division. Yeah, I think so. Um, I hope they give them time to, you know, show them what they can do. They've got three hours of Raw to fill. That's true. Yeah, there's only so many squash matches you can have. <laughs> yeah. Um, we didn't see Braun Strowman this week. We didn't know. Did was we? he on last week? Uh, yeah, we not last week. Um, I think they did show like a montage of him joke slamming people and all that. Yeah, they did. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so his presence was still there. Yeah. That brings us to the end of the show. It does Aaron twenty five? Mm, not bad. It's not too bad. I feel like we've had a good flow to this show, though. I think yeah, uh, we've, I think it's been good. I think so too. Um, 
please do subscribe to our podcast on iTunes yes, yes. And you can follow us on SoundCloud and we are also on Stitcher and other podcast services everywhere We're everywhere across all devices yep yep um, you can subscribe to our channel on YouTube yes, please uh, I'm sorry that there hasn't been any stream this week but yeah that's and mainly down to me being ill and needing to just rest up we will make it up to you I promise yes. Finnit is going to uh, do a little bit of streaming from a game that we've had from a publisher yep yep and that's going to be good um, I will stream the FIFA 17 demo at some point to give my thoughts on it cool um, and I'm going to do a new series on Twitch for my PES 2017 Master League and that's going to be coming soon Twitch exclusive Twitch exclusive nice get left our Twitch followers yes we can only add zero but yes yeah, but we never use it <laughs> we never use it uh, but for now this has been the Sunny and Finn show yes. thank you very much for listening I'm thank Sunny you. I'm Finn and we'll speak to you next week thank you very much guys take care goodbye goodbye, goodbye.